I think to let loose and you also let this uh, improvisation flow come in and that's that's always what I'm, I'm looking for or something I'm, I'm looking for. Hey Babette, how are you? Hi Victoria. Nice to see you. Yes, Thanks for so having me. exciting so have, to have you here because you are the harp teacher of one of our team members, Javier. And yes. from the very limited information I have known about you through him, I'm already very intrigued about your harp journey and all the things you do with the harp. So can you tell us a little bit about how you get started with the harp and, and how, uh, where, where your journey has led you so far? Yes, um, so I started playing the harp actually relatively late. When I was uh, 14, I played the violin before, and I did the whole usual going to the music school as a child, this thing, playing the violin in an orchestra, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, when I was a teenager, there was a harp teacher coming to our music school in our town, which is a relatively small town, but they do have an orchestra. And the orchestra, um, they were getting the harpist there. And she did a, like a free trial day in the music school to introduce the instrument. I was sitting down at the harp and I think that's something all harpists know all over the world. I just tried it and it felt great. And the, like the harp itself felt great and the strings and just the, the physical, Bodywork, somehow the feeling is straight and you kind of hug the instrument and it felt so nice and so great that I decided to learn the harp and put the violin in the corner and never played the violin again. That's, that was the beginning. And it took me really, really far. The harp is a reason for so many, like, um, people I met, um, we, yeah all over the world actually like for example you and it leads me into so many different directions and the harp showed me so many different types of music like through the harp i discovered so much and it's um i guess it's a, a, a big part of um, me myself yeah. yeah that's that's very exciting right because even when i was just looking at all the different music groups that you are involved in you play a very wide range of music. And to me, that is quite special because I find, even for myself, I tend to gravitate towards something I like and then I might get a little pigeonhole into it. And it would take me some work to really dive into another genre. So tell us about the different music groups that you're involved in and how do they relate to you as a musician when you are trying out so many different things? Yeah, that's a good question, actually, the last one you asked. Um, so I will start with, um, with the ensembles and the different people I play with. Um, at, at the moment, like last year or the last two years, I've been playing in, um, two Baroque ensembles with, um, this one over there. You're going to have to show me this with in a bit. <laughs> with my Baroque hub. And I also play um, folk music uh, with my duo partner. We actually figured out last week that next year it will be 10 years that we've been playing together with each other, which is uh, a long time, I think. Uh, we met in the music school at our first day of studying in the music school in Leipzig, so in, in the music university. Um, so that kind of happened by accident. We met and we became friends and later on uh, flatmates in the BG and that's it. And um, yes, I also have the Ensemble Sound Travelers, which is, which kind of um, works with new concert concepts and the concerts are more performances than normal concerts. There is no stage, there is no chairs, no stools, no music stands, no score. Um, the audience and the musicians walk through the buildings, kind of. And um, this is in, in this ensemble. I'm working together with um, very different musicians and also um, actors and dancers. Um, I also play the harp for recording sometimes for audiobooks or projects like this. And last year. 
I played together with a jazz pianist. It was my second time to play together with a jazz pianist. Fine. It's a funny connection because, uh, like, I always thought harp and piano, that doesn't really work together because it's kind of the same concept, sounds super similar, actually, when you record these two instruments. Um, yeah, but that was super nice to, um, play the harp on his, um, new CD. That's the, that's the stuff I'm, I'm doing right now, I'm busy with right now. And how does that relate? to me as a musician? Uh, that's probably a key question. Um, because I, I, I think it's, um, you can, it, there's two perspectives onto this, onto the fact that I'm interested in so many different styles of music. On the one hand, you could say, oh, she can't keep the focus and she's kind of like, doesn't know what she wants. I sometimes think that, like, I'm struggling sometimes with this idea, you know, and like, if you would have, a, like, if I would have a business advisor, he or she would tell me, you have to focus, you have to get um, specialized on some, something really, really special and don't do everything, you know, but, um, it always has been like this, that so many different things, um, interest me. And if they interest me, I, I want to do them. And, um, yeah, and I, I, I think I'm actually really lucky. I'm quite, I feel quite lucky that I can do all these things, um, which interest me. Um, and so the interest is probably the connection between all these things and luck, I guess. Yeah, I think when I think about my own musical journey, and I started with the piano when I was young, and um, classical music for the most part, and really didn't have a lot of opportunity to try other things. And I turned out to be not a super big fan for classical music. So yeah. it was almost an agony for me to spend so many years with classical music. And when I finally get to harp playing, I, mm. I, I quite enjoyed the, the freedom and the possibility of trying different things out. Um, yeah. and even when I reflect on myself choosing a teacher, um, I was quite impressed by how different types of music Josh would play, even though he self identified as a classical musician. So I think it's, it's probably a healthy thing for any musician to get their hands into everything and get a feel of what mm -hmm. they feel like. And, and, Absolutely. And, decide, right? and do you think, like, do you feel you could play anything on the harp? Like, do you feel like the music which interests you, like, what you would listen to on the radio or whatever, do you think you could, you, you can play all of that on the harp? Or what's I, your... I definitely think it is possible. Um, I come across the harp in a relatively not traditional way, which if you will, most people, I think when they know the harp, they think about the concert pedal harp or uh, a Celtic harp through the Celtic music. Um, my first exposure to the harp is actually an electric harp. I really like music that uh, are in the pop sort of scene. And there's a singer called Katie Tunstall. She's a, mm -hmm. a very avid pedal user. And through her, I have discovered a, a couple of harpists that play the electric harp along with the pedals, such as uh, Lara yeah. Simoji and also um, Deborah Henson uh, Conan, right? So uh, I, I, it, to me, that was a very eye-opening experience to see how diverse the harp can be. And yeah. I kind of keep remind myself that, you know, it, it harp has so many dimensions that is worth exploring. And I definitely think it is possible whether I have the skill to do it <laughs> yeah. or the right equipment is a different discussion. Uh, but speaking of equipment, I noticed you have a, a variety of harps behind you. And I believe they all serve for a different purpose for you. Can you tell us about a little bit of, you know, what you do with each type of harp and, and, and how did you decide especially to get into the Baroque harp? because that is something that I don't see very often. Mm, yeah, I, I'd love to tell you something about this. So, um, I g grew up, like, my first contact with harp, when I started to learn the harp, was actually a pedal harp. Um, it was not a lever harp, which nowadays is more usual that you start um, uh, with a lever harp. But in our m music school, in our small town, there was just one harp which was 
a golden horn gacha, very nice, a really nice pedal harp. And because I did not have an harp until I was 20 years old, actually, um, I always went practicing in the music school or in the theater because I was one of three harp students, I think, not, not many people. Um, so because I, I come from the classical side of harp, um, the first harp I bought was my pedal harp, this big thing over there. I, I call it the, um, Grand Madame, kind of, the Alte Dame. Uh, she's, I think she's kind of like 30 years old and, yeah. um, she, um, stood in the Gewandhaus, uh, in, in the cellar before I bought it. Um, so it was a former orchestra harp of the, um, Gewandhaus of Orchestra in Leipzig. And uh, I use this harp for kind of everything. This is my all-rounder. And I play orchestra um, music on this harp. Obviously, all the classical music. But I also um, like improvising on this harp because with the pedals, you're quite flexible and the sound is really warm <laughs> and yeah. big. And uh, the second harp I bought was this one. And um it's so crazy with this one, um the the Celtic, it's it's a normal Celtic harp, so with, with uh levers. And I did not really want to buy a lever harp, but I found this harp builder, Pip Weisgaber, you also know, I heard, um, in Berlin. And I visited his workshop and first this person is such a lovely person and he's such a good human being. Um, and then second, I tried his harps and I was just blown away. I was literally blown away. I was so blown away that I bought a Leo harp. And of course I played the folk music on this. Um, but also I like to, uh, because it's so light, it's only eight kilos. I bring it wherever I go. I can bring it with me wherever I go. And I use public transport also with, with a big one and it's so, it's really good to when it, wherever you go, you can take it up. And this one is the rock harp, a uh, so-called triple harp, um, which has uh, three rows of strings on the outside. Um, the two rows have kind of the white keys of the piano, so C D E F G A B, <laughs> and in the middle you have the black keys, oh. so all the flats and sharps. Um, so this harp has no levers and no pedals, but it has all the, the 12 half tones of our European musical system um, because it has these three rows. So this is actually kind of perfect for contemporary music, I think. And I don't know why no composer has um, has had the idea to compose for triple harp because it's so um, it's so easy to play chromatic um melodies or whatever because you don't have to use the levers and you don't have to use the pedal. The strings are just in front of you. Um so this is um for the rock music. I have seen the double strung harp and I thought it would be interesting enough not to have my fingers fight with each other when I'm <laughs> plucking them. So I'm very interested in seeing the triple harp in action. Do you mind doing a little demo for us? Oh yeah, I can try that, yeah. I think I played the beginning of the piece by um Dowland. So it sounds um super different. I hope you can hear me when I'm talking. It sounds super different. It sounds a bit like lute or um theorbo. Interesting. It's super different to the big harp. <laughs> Yeah, you can. 
can actually hear that the, the lower strings are also gut strings and they sound they sound a bit weird. I can definitely tell when you say it has a different sound than like a, say a pedal harp. I can I can definitely yeah. hear that. Yeah. And yeah. And is that something you will have to find a specialized teacher to be able to teach you because I presume there's a whole set of skills involved with this. Absolutely. I and I'm um I I only started playing the baroque harp um two years ago now. Um with getting lessons and so on and it still feels because you have to find the the strings in between it still feels sometimes whoa whoa where am i where where are the strings so um because this is not a common instrument at all um it's it's hard to find a teacher and i had lessons with the person i bought the harp from margot Köll in berlin um who is a really 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 good um triple harp player it's crazy what she plays on that instrument i sometimes think it's, it's not possible to play these things on on a triple harp and and she's she's she really plays really beautiful i also have lessons with maximilian Erhardt, also in berlin who just brought out a cd i think um but um irregularly and um i go to workshops I also like for the for the specific baroque questions. I also have um, um, cembalo playing uh, harpsichord playing friends who I can ask um, about the styles and the ornamentation because the whole baroque world and earlier music world is so different, and you don't necessarily learn that um, when you study music. Actually, not at all. So <laughs> you have to. Um, you have to find your resources and do some research on your own. Yeah. Well, let's circle back to the lever harp, because like you mentioned, it is more common now. And because I think of the price point, a lot of people generally start with a lever harp now. Um, in fact, I, I, I think I'm going to need to need a second mortgage <laughs> for a pedal harp. So I am playing with my lever harp right now. Um, and like yourself, like I started the harp quite late. I'm, even later than you. Um, and I know a lot of people who are adult learners now are just starting with in an instrument. Um, yeah. What are some of the good starting points you think for adult learners when it comes to the harp? How, what, what, are, what are some of the first steps you think are going to be very crucial for us to have before we can expand our wings and try different things? Um. The, uh, that's uh, I also really like that question. I uh, I always start with adult um, beginners. I always start with improvising. Actually, mm. um, a thing where well, some people might say, "What if you can't play anything? How would you improvise?" But I think um, the um, the biggest problem adult beginners have are themselves like adult beginners have so many things they think about when they start and they always feel so unperfect and uh, they're so um self-conscious they're so self-conscious and so harsh and you know with themselves and um they're always um it's it's always not not good enough and they didn't uh, practice enough that's I'm exaggerating, but I think you know what I mean because I um, we are conscious beings, you know. Um, so um, I like to start with improvising in the first lessons to to let loose and to um, to make the the, the um, to make the student free um, or, and also not so to to minimize the criticism maybe if that's if that's possible. Um, so starting with with only one note and one hand with a really, really long break in between just to get a little bit one with a instrument like that they kind of grow together. Um, and I think that's the most important thing when you start learning any instrument. It's not harp specific or if you, with, with everything else you learn later on in your life, you have to say yes, but they all they 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 always um have done that already because you don't learn hard if you do if you don't really want that. Um, but I think to let loose and to also 
let this uh, improvisation flow come in. That's that's always what I'm, I'm looking for. What's something I'm, I'm looking for? Yeah. Yeah, I really resonated with what you said about being in one with the instrument because, um, you know, I, I remember myself being in a stage where I'm just so concerned about playing the right note, playing it at the right time signature and just doing everything right. And it almost comes off too mechanical, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, whereas when I start to let loose a little bit and just accept that, you know, I'm, I'm expressing myself in here instead of just reading the music perfectly. I yeah. think the outcome generally is more genuine, is more authentic, is more me. If yeah. that if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And have you um have you tried improvising on your instrument? Um, I don't do a lot of it. I just start dabbling on it. And like you said, I, I start with very simple couple notes, you know, yeah. without really thinking about whether or not it's right or wrong. And I find myself doing it sometimes too when I don't really have the energy, if you will, to play through a whole song, but I just want to spend time with the instrument. I think the improvisation is one of those things that I can do to, to connect with the harp instead of, you know, yeah. to practice for something that is perfect or performance ready. Um, I, and I think that is something that I, I would like to do more of, um, especially yeah. after hearing, uh, Javier's experience too with doing improvisation with you in his lesson. And I yeah. think that's a, a fantastic uh, exercise to do uh, as an adult learner, for sure. Absolutely. It's a pity that at the moment, like, through online lessons, is it's tough. Yeah. It's tough to improvise. Like, uh, like in, in my in my lessons, I usually, like, we, we sit in front of each other and we play together and we both improvise, you know? It's, like, on one, uh, um, on one level. And through the online teaching... It's uh it's tough with improvising because um you can't really play together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of um playing together, um uh, you had played in an orchestra before, and then of course you have also played in different music group that you have just described. Um, and in your recent uh launch of a CD with your uh folk music group Cloud, there is a a flute duet that you play with. Um, how do you think playing with other musicians um, might help us as a harpist, even though if we're not playing with other harpists? Why, why do you think it's, it's a good idea to, to be with other instruments? <clears throat> uh, first of all, um, this is also not harp specific. I think this is the, this is the reason why we make music because we can talk through music and we can feel things together while playing music we could never ever describe with words. I think everybody who plays together with other people has um has um recognized this and it, that's that I think that's what keeps you making music. It's this undescribable feeling when you play together and you realize Oh, this is somehow working. I have no idea why, and and it feels great together. I have no idea why. I don't know. To, I I I don't even know why. I'm just doing it. So uh, first of all, this is um, this is the best thing to do to play together with other people, and um, uh, for for harpists, um, there's always some special things which might make it a bit more different to play with other people than with other instruments i think at least i think that's the that's kind of a prejudice um whatever if it's classical music or folk or, or baroque or whatever um which is first of all the size of the instrument like playing together with a pedal harp always means that the people have to come to my house <laughs> because it's tough to me to go to their house. So, you know, there's the, the there's the logistic sides of playing chamber music together or in bands. Um, um, sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a, a volume or, you know, the, the sound issue. But that's at least what some people might say. But I actually discovered that like harp works together with every other instrument and uh, volume is not a problem and um yeah great to play together with other musicians in the orchestra um although it's uh, it's tough in the orchestra because there's so many people 
in an orchestra and the harp is all is most of the time it's just one harp and you really have to play really loud so that the people can hear you and every conductor always says harp louder please over there just play louder it's always the same it, it, it really is i bet uh, most of the orchestra artists have the same experience yeah. Thank you.